Um, I know Penn State uh, on their end, a couple offensive linemen. I know a couple guys missed last week, and uh, I think uh, Landon Tengwall, he's going to miss this weekend. And I'm just kind of curious, you know, with uh, new faces possibly up front, uh, how, how do you guys prepare? Does that kind of alter, you know, what your preparation or what, you know, how, how you evaluate Penn State at all? No, I mean, you know, we, we evaluate scheme. Obviously, we look at personnel. Um, uh, the guys that have filled in for those guys have filled in quite admirably. If you look at the way they played a week ago, um, you know, this time of year, everybody's dealing with it. You know, a week ago, we had Mason Lunsford out. Um, Billy was not able to play. I mean, he came in to take the first snap, but uh, he, he was he was a, a emergency guy for us. We got just – this time of year is part of the, the nature of the beast of, of playing in a, a conference like this one. So uh, I don't think it affects game plan because they've got, they've recruited well, they've recruited depth, they've created depth and um, the positions they you know maybe have the injuries in. I've seen guys step up and play admirably for them. Go to Josh. Hey, how you doing coach? What's up, Josh? Not much. Uh, so, so far this season, you guys have yet to, you know, lose back to back games. I was just wondering if it's, if there is anything that you can uh, attribute that to and what does it say about the team? You know, it's interesting because I, I didn't know that. Um, I would attribute it to just, as I've said before, the culture shift in our locker room. Um, it's definitely uh, been player led a week ago against Wisconsin. Like I said, nobody, including myself, uh, handled the elements very well. And it was disappointing because it was an opportunity for us to try to take a step forward in, 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 in conference play. And uh, again, we've, we've flushed that. Uh, I think the way our guys go about preparing every week, uh, the consistency in which we prepare, as I said, that, you know, that's as important as anything because uh, the results on Saturday are typically a byproduct of uh, what you do, you know, Monday through Friday. And, you know, this team has continued to show up. We've had, you know, I think two really good practices here this past Tuesday, Wednesday, which are big, big work days. And, you know, today we've got a, a, a fast Thursday, kind of clean Thursday where we try to go out and hit all the different segments of our game plan. And, and, and then we have a mental day tomorrow. We'll drive up and go compete on Saturday. Go to Varun. Hey, Coach. Um, how are you? Hey, how are you, man? Doing all right, doing all right. Uh, so I wanted to ask, you know, you guys spread the ball around a lot on offense. What's the benefit of getting the ball to a bunch of different players rather than, you know, spamming the Dante Demas or Rakim Jared buttons? Um, I think the inherent advantage is that, you know, most of us as coaches, we look to see where the ball is going and who you're targeting. And then we try to take those people out of the game plan by, you know, running systems or schemes that, that force other guys to have to make plays. And so for us, as I've said before, when you're really diverse with how you spread the ball around, whether it's backs, tight ends, receivers, uh, obviously we, we understand the goal is to get our best players the ball. And, you know, in my mind, there's a certain amount of times we want to get each player the ball. Uh, and that's a game to game decision that's based on what they do well versus what the other team does well. But what I found is that the more diverse you are on offense in terms of touches and targets, uh, the harder it is defensively for them to try to take something away. Um, and so to me, that's just been a philosophy uh, to be really multiple and diverse. Uh, we do have guys that I would like to see get more targets and uh, I'd like to see us play a little faster to where we're able to get more plays, which allows uh, when you have the skill like we do, it allows you to run more plays, which allows more touches for good players. Do you feel like you guys have gotten so, – so you don't feel like there's been uh, – you feel like there's been points this year where you haven't gotten the ball to your best players enough? I think there are times in games where, you know, last week it, what, your receivers are really good players, but if it's a 30-mile-per-hour win, you adjust and do the things that allow uh, the other players and other schemes to take over. How do you guys balance wanting to spread the ball around with not wanting, you know, your star players to get lost in the offense at times? Well, we don't worry about get, getting lost and we don't worry about, you know, when we say we want to spread it around, it's not based on trying to spread it around. It's if you look at my call sheet, it'll have how many touches I want certain guys to get the ball. Obviously, we try to 
call certain plays where we think they're going to get the ball, but they're in, in, you can't guarantee anyone to get the ball, especially if it's not being handed to them because there's something called coverage. And sometimes coverage takes that away from you and it goes somewhere else. So again, we don't try to force feed the ball to players and we don't go in and say, Hey, we want to, let's see how much we can spread it around. Um, we go in with a thought in our minds of how many times we want each guy to try to get the ball and then sometimes the game dictates it. Sometimes calls dictate it. Sometimes uh, weather, as we saw last week, dictates it. And then sometimes defenses defend it, and the ball ends up going somewhere else. Got you. And then um, just kind of a question about something you said earlier. Uh, what's Mason's status for the game Saturday? Uh, Mason right now is a scratch. Okay. And then what was uh, Billy dealing with uh, in Wisconsin? Uh, he was an emergency third. He was dealing with the high ankle sprain from the uh, Northwestern game. We finished on it, didn't practice at all during the two weeks uh, of bye weeks uh, practice, traveled. And, and, and like I said, unfortunately, I had to take the first snap, which was a zone read play where the ball should have been pulled in a run. But because he couldn't run, he handed it off to give us time to get Leah and his helmet fixed. Thank you. Yep. We'll go to Wes. Hey, Coach. Um, obviously, he heading into this week, you, you made a couple of changes to the depth chart, you know, officially moving Colton Deary into a starting position and and, and bumping uh, Ramon Brown into an in order there at, at kick return. Um, I guess over the course of the season, not changing it and then, you know, changing it now, what sort of goes into in, into making those changes? Well, I think how much pressure you guys put on Dustin to change the depth chart. Um, again, depth charts are a pain in the butt for coaches. I don't know who's going to be available to me. I can give you a depth chart and on Tuesday, somebody can fall off a scooter and then I've got to make adjustments. So, you know, depth charts are day to day, hour to hour. I mean, we lost Antoine Littleton in a pregame warmup going in the Northwestern. So to me, I don't know why y'all like it, why y'all so enamored with it. But as a coach, I just try to figure out who I have available and then we kind of figure out how we want to play them. And a lot of those decisions aren't made as to how we want to play players uh, until Saturday after we go through a week of evaluating how they performed in, in, in practice and with the game plan things we've asked of them. Have we had any scooter issues this year or is that, is that just something? Okay, what? You, you, you mentioned the scooters. Have we had any scooter issues this year? I mean, I know I've almost run into a bunch of people on scooters and bikes and skateboards. Um, yeah, we've dealt with some scooter issues for sure. Yes, we have. We'll go back to Varun. Oh, God. He missed Tuesday, <laughs> and now he's going to ask 10 questions a day. Um, I wanted to ask about Ramon Brown. Uh, you guys try to get him some touches every now and then. What do you guys see that he does well, and what does he bring to your offense? Yeah, he's one of those explosive uh, players. Uh, he's a fast twitch guy that has shown the ability in practice. He makes some big plays for us. Uh, he's a, he runs the ball physical. He fits right in line with those other young running backs we have. And so, again, um, he's one of those guys that we say, hey, you know, we need to try to get him five to seven touches a game if we can. And uh, we've tried to do that over the course of uh, the last, you know, five, six weeks. And He's got a bright, bright future for us. Um, we put him back there as a returner because of uh, the skill set he's shown. And so he's one of those guys for us. Thank you. No problem. All right. Like <laughs> got, well, I know you got one more. One more. Come on, one more. Bro. Think of something. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. All, All right. right. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Everyone. See you up there. Uh, appreciate you, Coach. Be careful on scooters.